Ooh, this guy might keep. Good eating size speckled trout. And it is. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, folks at home, this is speckled trout number 24. Can I catch speckled trout number 25? Can we polish off this limit and call this fishing trip a success? Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the channel. My name's Captain Devin and I teach people how to catch speckled trout and redfish right here on Louisiana's coast. So if that's something you think you'll enjoy, then by all means, please consider subscribing to my channel. And today's goal is to go to the famed community honey hole, Martello Castle. And look, for anyone that would be upset that I actually named like the spot of like where it is I'm fishing, um, guys, I got, I got something to tell you. It's a community honey hole. Everybody knows about it. It's literally been turning on since the 60s when it was made. That's since before half of you were born. And besides, if you can really fish, what you would do is that you would just go find your own fish somewhere in the marsh that isn't well known, like what I do. And that is what I teach inside of my inshore fishing courses. Anyway, I'm going on a rant and I don't wanna go on a rant. High tide was something like 9 a.m. and it's gonna be falling all the way to well past sundown. And this time of the year, those white shrimp are taking a ride out to the Gulf of Mexico for their spawn. So what I'm gonna do is fish that last half of that falling tide at a big pass like Martello Castle. And I'm hoping to catch a limit of good eating size speckled trout. This could be better. Okay, I'm gonna come off plane right here. I'm gonna come off plane right here because I wanna graph this bad boy. I'm seeing some bait balls, but nothing super crazy. I don't wanna see some bait balls. I wanna, I wanna see all the bait balls. All right, but I, I'm seeing some more now. Some more fish, nothing crazy though. Let's go ahead and get a line in the water. All right, I'll tell you that there isn't anything I really like about this. This isn't what I thought. <laughs> this is not how I thought this was gonna be. Uh, the water's kind of brown. I thought it would be cleaner and look better than this. There's like no diving birds. Oh, there's like a bird that just showed up. I don't see any jumping shrimp. I saw some bait balls, so that's good. But I really don't like the way all this looks here. You can definitely tell how hard the water is falling here because the wind's blowing from that direction, but the boat's pointed in that direction. So that's good. We want a good hard falling tide. So I, I predicted that would happen and it's happening. So at least there's that going for me. Well, It's a smaller white trout, and uh, I'm here for speckled trout. D listen, if I caught like 112 to 14 inch white trout today, right now, I'm all right with that. But let's cast back out and see if we can't catch a speckled trout, like a lot of them. Thanks, buddy. Come on, Mr. Seagull. Show me where they at. Man, that feels like it. I thought it felt like a trout, and it feels more like a catfish now. <gasps> but it is a trout. It is the kind of trout I'm looking for. Ooh, yeah. All right. So now that I caught a nice keeper size speckled trout, let me tell you about the rig I'm using. Oh, and the skunk is out the boat, baby. Welcome to the team, buddy. All right, so what I'm throwing here, as you probably noticed, it's not a bait caster. It is a spinning setup, and it's a drop shot with a 3 out J hook, three inch gulp shrimp and new penny. And at the bottom is a one ounce lead weight. So that's a one ounce weight. And I have a one ounce weight because first off, this wind is rocking. And then I got this current that is just ripping, going straight down the middle of Lake Bourne. And it's like 25 foot deep. So what works best here is just to get to the bottom, but keep the bait off the bottom. Even with a, a half ounce jig, it was kind of tough getting down there. And then I really don't want to throw anything heavier than that. I mean, I could, and it could work, and I could catch them, but why would I do that when this is working? This is what I call my heavy drop shot rig, and you will find a detailed description of it in this video right here. And even with a one ounce weight, it's still skipping along the bottom. 
So it kind of presents to the fish in, in a way that they expect bait to come to them, which is moving along with the current, going out to Lake Bourne along the bottom. Now, if we get a good run of shrimp through here, they'll start chasing the shrimp up to the surface and you can start catching them at the top with corks or light jig cuts. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. It's a little bigger than what I like to keep, but that will work. Bam, baby. Nice keeper size speckled trout. And I'm the only boat out here right now. Afternoon trip, didn't have to get up early. Speckled trout number two. If this is a trout, it's a nice one. Boom, man, called it, huh? Yeah, this reminds me, I probably ought to fish with gulp more often. I used to fish with gulp all the time, but there's a problem with gulp, and, and that problem is that it just tears up so easily. So something you can do is put it on whatever hook it is you're gonna fish it with. So what I'm saying is that you can put the gulp on a jig head or hook, whatever it is you're gonna fish with it, put it on there the day before and let it dry out a little bit. And it becomes like a jerky almost. It becomes a lot tougher, it doesn't tear as easily, it lasts much longer. If it becomes too dry, you can always put it back in the water and it'll soften up a little bit, but still be significantly tougher than what it was coming out of the package. Speckled trout number three, baby. Boom. Oh, please be a please be a keeper spec, and it looks like a keeper spec. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, boy. That's what I came here for. I'm gonna measure them just to be sure. Bam! Welcome to the club. Now there's like, uh, I don't know, like 10 birds diving behind the boats. That's good. Oh, come on, just be 12 inches, baby. No, 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 you don't. Not yet. Man. He doesn't make it. Back in the water you go. Oh, feels like a trout. Oh, buddy, that's it right there. Auto release into the boat. And that's a keeper all day long. Welcome. Get back out there. Oh yeah. What the heck? Whoa, 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 what's this? This has gotta be, well, this is interesting. Man, he's just running with it too. Try to put the kibosh on this guy. Ah, man, I really wish he wasn't going around the, the boat like this. Okay, fish. I gotta do something about this fish. Cause I need all this line back. Oh. Go underneath the trolling motor. Please and thank you, there we go. Spotlight back down. And let's figure out what this is. Cause he is just rolling. Oh man, this ain't good. Cranking this drag down and either that line will pop. Yep, there we go. 
I'm not interested in land, guys. I mean, that was what in the hell? Okay, something's going. On. Something's crazy. This is crazy. What the hell? All right, this is what happened. I felt something hit. That was like a speckle trap, and it, he's right there. I'm about to flip him in the boat. I felt something hit that was indeed a speckled trout. And then something hit that speckled trout and took off like a madman. As big as that thing was, it was either a giant bull red, possibly a jack, also possibly a gar. This has got to be one of the craziest trout catches I've made in a while. Oh my gosh. Look, this guy just got shredded. He's not even on the hook. He just went up the main line. Oh well, he's going to get flayed anyway. Yeah, these birds are getting worked up. Good, good, good. Come on, birds, let's crush them. There's gotta be, man, if there was like 10 behind the boat, when I started tying that rig up in that short amount of time, now there's like, if I had to guess, there's like 30, maybe 50. But you know how it is. You can have one seagull find, uh, find a potato chip in the water and then there'll be 20 that'll show up and they'll start fighting over it. Ah, birds, stay away from that. Not, I don't, don't you even. We're not doing this. Nope. I'm not unhooking a bird today. Ah, uh, man, I, you know what's so cool is that earlier, right here, like I didn't really see a whole lot on the graph, but I'm looking now, and let me show you all this. Now you can see, look at, look at all that red right there. Look at all this right here. They're starting to show up. They really like, I, I personally believe during this time of year, that last half of a falling tide, that's best. Now, I wasn't here at, you know, 9, 10, 11 a.m., so I don't know for sure, but off, off the years that I've been doing this, I would much rather be here for the last half. In fact, I have a fishing trip review inside LFB Elite for about the same time of the year in 2018, where I fished this spot first thing in the morning, and I caught a limited speckle trap, but I had a I had to scratch them out. That, that feels awesome right there. I had to scratch them out. But then I came back later in the day at like 2 p.m. or something like that and just walloped another 25 on a jig. And it was like, it was pretty much every cast action. It was good. Didn't catch any sail cats either. Another freaking sail cat, man. I'm gonna try and throw a jig now that the birds are cranking up a little bit. Ooh, come on now. That feels good. Oh yeah, boy. That was awesome. I love it when they jump like that. Da, 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 da. Caper. That's speckle trout number seven. Come on, stay hooked up, stay hooked up. Oh, 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 that was a nice trout too. Stay hooked up, come on, baby. Bam, auto release. 12. Welcome to the club. Speckle trout number eight. Right in front of the boat, man. I don't think this guy's 12 inches, but I'll try him out. Yeah, nowhere close. Jumping shrimp right there. Yeah, baby. That's what I want to see. Yes. Oh, right underneath, again, underneath the boat. Oh, that, he might've been 12 inches. If he was, he was close. I can see fish on the graph and I just don't want to have to relocate the boat. I hate having to move it. Sometimes I feel like if you're catching them this close to the boat, then just keep doing it, man. This guy ain't 12 inches, but he is a speckled trout and that's good. I think things are cranking up. Things are definitely heating up. Mm, mm, mm. Come on. The line just kind of loaded up there. It wasn't really a thump. I didn't see it move. It just got heavy. Spit it, spit it, spit it. Uh, maybe not. 
Man, he's right on it. Boom. Speckled trout number nine. So this could be a little repetitive. I cast out, boom, get slack out, get that jig to the bottom, bounce it back to the boat, maybe let it swing wide and sideways, parallel to the boat, and then the cast is complete. I reel back in, I do it again, and I do it again and again until I catch a fish. If I do it like five times, I don't catch a fish, I'll just cast somewhere else. It is good to fan cast around the boat, but it seems like right here, I'm doing pretty good, so I'm just gonna stick with that. Ooh, uh-oh. Nope, never mind. He came off. Come on, stay buttoned up, baby. That feels good. Oh, so, yep, that's what I want. Boom. Bam, baby, that's good keeper size speckled trout right there. And this is speckled trout number 10. Bam, come on. Another speckled trout right there, cast right back out. Speckled trout number 11. I could just see something just getting thrashed out there. That is awesome. Ooh, ah, it feels like a cat. Oh, it's a, no, it's a trout. Come on, baby. Bam. Good keeper speckle trout. That's nice speckle trout number 12. And this is a speckle trout. I don't know, running towards the boat like, it's a speckle trout. It's a nice keeper speckled trout. Keeper speckled trout, baby. Bam. And this is speckled trout number 13. That means we're halfway there. I tell you what, when I first showed up here, I, I, I was having my doubts. I was. But I know just to stick with it, just to keep trying. This is a situation where I would stick with it. For sure. Come on, baby. Be what I came looking for. Oh, it's coming to the top. Wow. Boom. Right there in the boat. But are you 12 inches? If you are, you're gonna be freaking close. And yes, you are. Number 14. Maybe it's time we just montage this bad boy. 15. Yeah, boy, come on! It is. He's like 13 inches. Welcome to the club, buddy. Number 16. You know what? Boom, there we go. Number 17. What's up, buddy? To the boat. <laughs> What's this? Yep, boy, come on. Into the boat. Hell yeah. Speckle trout number 19. Come on, baby. Oh, it's speckle trout. Speckle trout number 20. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a trout ski, and it is. Bam, baby. Number 21. Oh, and he came off right there at the side of the boat. Oh, I'm not that worried about it. It's not like, you know, these are like big wall hanger fish or anything. They're, they're swimming sandwiches, let's be honest. Get into the boat. Speckle trout 22. Oh, well, bam. Number 23. Ooh, this guy might speckle trout number 24. Nope, nope, he just, we got an escapee. All right. Can I catch speckle trout number 25? Can we polish off this limit and call this fishing trip a success? Can I go home and call myself a man? Ooh, that feels good. But I don't think it's a keeper. No, sir. This is a throwback. You, sir, are a little tease. I thought I was done. I was not.
oh, this has to be a sail cat. Hit it way too hard and it's digging straight down. <laughs> oh, it's a big dumb one. Oh, he came off auto release, thank goodness. I think speckle trout number 25 just wants to be caught on a jig. Oh, what we got going on here? Line just kind of loaded up. Could be 12 inches. <laughs> Buddy, we're, we're, we're gonna see if you're the one. Okay, so boom. Dang it! Ah! 11.8. On the retrieve. Boop, get it down to the cockpit, please. I'm feeling lucky. Okay. Bam, 13 inch fish. Oh. All right. That is only what I could describe as being a pretty freaking awesome speckle trout trip. That's classic South Louisiana fall fishing. One stop shop, baby. Now that's the second trip this fall that I've done that. And right now, so you know, it's only September. What happened here today was not luck. Nobody told me those fish were there, nobody. What keeps me onto those fish is fishing the conditions, not waiting for someone on Facebook to tell me where the fish are at. Knowing what those conditions are, identifying them, picking out fishing spots based upon them, knowing where to cast a line and what to do when fish don't bite. These are all things I teach inside my membership at LAFB Elite. Courses like Inshore Fishing 101, How to Break Down New Marsh, Inshore Fishing 201, Sight Fishing Mastery School, and many more. To learn more about the benefits of my membership, you can visit lafbelite.com or use the link in the video description below. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Because I'll tell you that I enjoyed this fishing trip. <laughs> I caught a lot of nice eating sized speckled trout. And if you want to know when the next video goes live, all you have to do is subscribe and ring that bell for all notifications. Thanks for watching and tie lines.